in Qigong, we often talk about how to gather energy from the outside and to use this energy to make some active work to transform our field, our perception, our reality. But something that is not often spoken about is how much we are losing and wasting our energy in many different ways. Obviously, there are many ways in which we can be losing energy. For example, with unproductive thinking patterns or with addictions. But today we're going to speak more specifically about the energy we spend and we lose from negative relationship with others. And we're not speaking here only about the relationship with people that we want to eliminate that are completely negative for us, but also about the people who are close to us, which we want to continue nourish and maintain relationship with them. Still in this relationship, there can be more than one element that is damaging us and even the other person in many ways. So in this video we're going to talk about how to heal these relationships and how to restore our energy. So let's start straight away with the first case scenario of the person that we have a conflict with, that we want to avoid as much as possible, or maybe even we have already not been seeing this person for many years, but still this person affects us indirectly, maybe in our dreams, or maybe just thinking about this person makes us uncomfortable. And this is a very important category because in our life we close many relationships, still not completely solving the energetical situation that was going on. And for this reason, we keep doors open and our energy keeps on flowing away in all these directions continuously. So imagine like if we have an open conflict with somebody, it's like a part of ourself is constantly stuck in this reality where we are arguing, where we have this conflict with this person. So what often happens here is that this person represents for us an attitude that we completely disagree with, that we want to separate ourselves from. And a common thought about the situation that prevents us to heal this relationship and this part of ourself is that if we forgive that person, then this means that we also accept what they do as correct and we may even become like them if we allow this to happen. So it may very well be that some person appears in your life also to teach you what you don't want to become and it's completely fine. And still this can be a positive lesson for you. But even in this case, I think it is very important still to try to consider all the factors who play in this situation and try to understand the person from a human perspective and understand how they got to behave in that specific way. And also our part of possible mistakes, of shortcomings that we have had. So I believe that if a person keeps on appearing in your mind or if the thought or the memory of this person feels uncomfortable to you, then this is a sign that there is still something for us to learn in that situation. All these painful spots that we don't want to touch are like our emotional system pointing us that there there is something that we can work with. So this work is a very precise type of work on ourselves. It requires a lot of observation and going deeper and uncovering different layers of this conflict that we have with this person and what this conflict holds for us to learn. Often, for example, we cannot accept in others what we cannot accept in ourselves. So by completely rejecting this person, we are also completely rejecting a part of us which has some quality in common with that person. And so by Meditating on that person and understanding and accepting its shortcomings and also its values, its good points, its human face, then we are also accepting more and more this part of ourselves which we associate to this person. Also another very important factor in this kind of work is the concept that we as humans often give away a lot of our free will, of our power over our life, to other people and often we do so in completely unconscious way. For example, we give others the right to determine how much we are worth 
or we give other people the right to choose what we can or what we cannot do. And so in many cases with these unresolved conflicts, we have give, given a portion of our power in the hands of that person. So to work on this specific aspect, it is very interesting and very useful to practice visualizing this person and imagining that we are giving them back their rights, their power, their energy, and on the other side that we are taking back our own power, energy, permission to live or to whatever thing in life. We can, for example, visualize the other person being free, how we release them, how we wish them to walk their own path in their own way, accepting them for whatever they are and wishing them the best to continue growing and express in their own unique specific way. On the other side, we want to visualize how the judgment of this person doesn't tie us anymore, that we are free to express ourselves and how we take back in our hands the power that we have seized in the hands of this person. So this process of taking back and giving back the power, the free will, the energy, the choice can be a very healing act. And I suggest you to do it with as much as love as possible. In fact, when you become able to feel love and compassion for this person, then it means that you are starting to heal more and more this relationship. And it doesn't mean necessarily that after that you may want to connect again with this person or get closer to them. You may still walk completely separate path, but with a greater acceptation and understanding and also appreciation for what this person brought to your life and taught you. So we were talking before about how our emotional body points us the places where we can still do some work on ourselves because there is still a trauma open. And the reason why our energy body does that is because it sees that there is a great opportunity for transformation and growth in there. So to be able to let go and heal the relationship we have with somebody and to restore this hole in our energy field, we are required to make a specific learning. Obviously this learning is unique for every case and only you can know what it is. And also there may be different layers of learning for each of these traumatic relationships we may have. So when we are trying to heal these relationships, a very powerful tool is to try to imagine that version of ourselves which has been able to integrate the lesson from this particular situation, which is able to let go that person and to feel free, to feel empowered to walk in life and see how this version of yourself feels. So it is a way to motivate ourselves to do this work, to think about the positive potential that this has for us. And also, again, for every relationship is different. Some are there to teach us to be more kind and compassionate. Some are here to teach us to be more free and more empowered and believe more in ourselves. So again, it's up to us to understand which type of qualities we are required and are accessible to us through this particular learning. So in here the practice could be imagining this version of myself which has already integrated these qualities, which feels more mature, more wise. And we try to integrate these qualities in ourselves and to become this version of ourselves, which is able already to make this next step in our life, thanks to the teaching that we received from this particular person. Okay, so the second case that I want to speak about today is the case of the partner. I speak about this example because it is very special and because in here we can see clearly some mechanisms that are more difficult to see in other relationships with, for example, the family or friends. But obviously what we say here is applicable to all kinds of relationships that we want to heal. So with our partner or also with any other person that we want to heal the relationship while still maintaining the relationship, not while separating from this person. The game can be a little bit different. And here we may be holding on to some of these negative patterns because we may be afraid that if we release this attachment, then we're going to also separate ourselves from the person and increase the distance between us. 
This is especially visible in relationships, how we create patterns of control of the other person and somehow diminish the other person, make it smaller in a certain way. Or also many other times, we make ourselves smaller, we close ourselves up to make the other person feel safe, to make the other person feel not threatened by us. And on many levels, this is the normal, accepted way that we collectively perceive romantic love. And many of these negative patterns are suggested and encouraged by society and by other people. So the point that I would like to make today, that I consider very important, is that we can release these patterns of control of the other person and of ourselves. And this will not diminish the connection with that person but it actually has the potential to increase much more the quality of the relationship and how much enriching it is for both of you. So many times we control the other person and we put limits to the other person unconsciously, obviously, most of the times, to the point that this person becomes so diminished that it loses passion, it loses drive to live and to do other things, and this slow by slow also diminishes the attraction we may have for the other person. And the opposite can also happen, that we give up so much of our life for our partner that in the end we become a completely uninteresting person which has nothing to offer. We can often see how people entering in relationship, or especially some types of relationship, become really smaller and close up and it's like their light is dimming and becoming less intense. And also here, shining our light and expressing ourselves, living our life, doesn't mean to have no regard for the other person's feelings and to hurt them in many ways. We can still be careful and attentive to the other person, but still taking in our hands the, the right to shape our life. Also, I believe that this common idea of the honeymoon phase where only at the beginning we can experience these amazing and magic feelings is also due to the fact that only at the beginning we are still free and still expansive and still expressing ourselves at the fullest. And then slow by slow in the relationship we become smaller and smaller and then eventually, obviously, also the feeling starts to get less and less. So I believe that if we truly love someone, then we should be able to wish their good, to wish that they express themselves to the fullest, that they research what they feel truly inspired to research, and not on the opposite, that by loving them, we constrain them and limit them in all ways because we are so afraid that we may lose them or that something may happen. So we can see that in healthy relationships, and not only romantic sense, but also any types of relationships. When two people come together, then they both are expanded, they both are enriched, and this connection brings new things to the plate for both. Where, in an unhealthy pattern, two people come together and they are in some kind of energetical war, which in the end doesn't benefit any of them. So also in this case of these relationships, of the ones we want to keep, maintain and nourish, we can still practice the same exercise as before to, well, first try to sink in deep and understand what is that makes us feel hurt, that makes us feel damaged. Then secondly, giving back the other person their power and taking back our own. And thirdly, trying to imagine, trying to project in which ways this teaching can enrich us and expand us. So when we have a conflict or a trauma or an injury with somebody, then this takes shape in our emotional field and until we solve it, it stays there. And this can even manifest in our physical body. So you may feel that sometimes when you try to work emotionally with some of the person that affect you, that you may feel pain or discomfort in certain areas of your body. This is very useful because it helps you even further to deepen the observation about this specific issue and by releasing this part of your body, by sending positive energy, by trying to sinking in there and observing what is there, then you have one more tool 
to solve and to work with this. So when we are doing a spiritual work, we try, for example, to increase the intensity of our energy, to increase the charge we have, so that we are able to make a concrete work to increase our vibration or change our reality, then all the things we may have in our field, as for example, open conflicts with other people, are like um, weights that are holding us back. It's like carrying a backpack that while we are climbing a mountain. So the more we are able to heal all these aspects of ourselves, the more we will feel that we are walking easily on the path, that we have less baggage carried with us. Okay, that's it for today. Obviously, we are just scratching the surface of a very, very big topic, and I would love to talk more about this in the future. I hope you enjoyed the video and that it has been useful for you. If you like this kind of content, I encourage you to consider subscribing to the channel. And yes, have a wonderful day and see you next time.